Now, the position on the periodic table tells us about the chemical and physical properties of the elements. Um, we've seen that. But also, the type of compound and the component elements tells us something about the chemical and physical properties of the compounds. So we need to be familiar with the elements, and we need to be familiar with some common uh, types of compounds. And from that familiarity, you can then predict the types of chemical and chem uh, physical and chemical properties of those compounds. Now, the type of compound, which is so important to be able to predict, is defined by the type of bonding that occurs between the atoms within the compound. All right, so if we look at the periodic table, at a glance, we know that we have metals on the left-hand side and we have non-metals on the right-hand side. And just from that idea, we have a, an image of the types of properties the metals will have versus the non-metals. So if you can find cadmium on the periodic table, you can immediately see that it's a metal and you can start to predict the types of properties um, that it would have. Now for compounds, there's three types of compounds that you need to be familiar with. And once you're familiar with them, you can start to get to know these compounds a little bit better and be able to um, predict their chemical and physical properties. Uh, the first type are ionic compounds, and they're formed by the strong attraction between oppositely charged species, typically between a metal cation and a non-metal anion. However, we will also need to become familiar with the polyatomic ions and be able to identify those. But the simplest case, first of all, is just a metal cation and a non-metal anion. And so whenever you see a compound, let's say um, calcium oxide, immediately you would go back to the periodic table, <clears throat> find where is calcium, find where is oxygen, identify them as a metal and a non-metal, and be able to predict that that type of compound is an ionic compound. For the covalent compounds, <clears throat> also referred to as molecules, they're formed by the strong attraction of different nuclei for the same pair of electrons. We call that a shared pair of electrons. Typically, this type of bonding occurs between nonmetals and other nonmetals sharing electrons. <clears throat> so again, if you were to um, see, see that there's a compound carbon monoxide, CO, could look back at the periodic table and know that uh, carbon is a nonmetal and oxygen is a nonmetal and be able to predict right away that that is a going to be a covalent compound. <clears throat> Finally, metallic compounds are formed by the strong attraction of different nuclei for the sea of electrons, the same sea of electrons in which they reside. This attractive force is between the metals and the metals, all sharing the same electrons. <clears throat> this type of a situation exists. For example, if you see a chunk of um, silver, pure silver, you, you see that it's a solid, you know that the individual silver atoms have to be bound to one another in some way, shape, or form, and they, they are bound by something called a metallic bond. So we have ionic compounds, covalent compounds, and metallic compounds, or uh, metallic ele elements. In this case, we are understanding the properties chemical and physical of the compounds based on the type of bonding that exists uh, in that particular uh, compound.